morning. So this morning we are just heading out now um, to feed to feed all the fat lambs. We need to give them silage this morning as well as some beans up. I want to do this, get this stuff in this tractor done first because the air conditioning's not working and it's going to be hot. So I'd rather sit in the ute where there is air conditioning. Slug, yeah, there she is. Slug's here. Um, doing slug things. Today I'll be able to show you the silage. A couple of videos ago, um, last, I think it was, it would have been like, I think November or October, I showed from a distance the silage being baled and then being wrapped in the paddock. And what silage is, it could be silage or haylage depending on the moisture content. What it is, is grass that has been baled, or can be anything really, but it's been baled when the moisture's still really high. You know when you cut grass and then the grass lays on the lawn for a bit and at first it's green and then it slowly dies? And when you're baling silage, you're baling it more green than if you were baling just regular hay or haylage. And then after we've baled it at a high moisture count, it is then wrapped in plastic and left in the sun to ferment. It leaves it smelling, it smells really nice. Um, I'll show you it when we start feeding it out. Whoops. That's what these bales here. Now we don't have smell of vision, so I'm not going to be able to like show you the smell, but probably good on most of my videos that you can't smell the smell. After you pierce them with a fork, you either have to use them or you have to tape them up so they continue to ferment correctly. I'm just going to set these up so I can throw them in the back of the um, back of the thing and we'll be back. the silage I don't think you can tell much of a difference from hay unless you're in person but it's it's got a smell to it it's it feels slightly warm and moist hello slug if anyone is looking for a uni major to go into go into um, agricultural technology and work out a better solution for this that biodegrades because it's just so wasteful with the plastic you can do it in bunkers, however, because we don't use it that often, um, it wrecks the bales and we don't have a wrapper for that. We've got the um, full wrapper. It smells so good in here. There you go. Well, you got your own seat in the tractor. Um, what was I going to say? Here are the first lambs we're feeding. These are Primeline Weathers, so all fat lambs. Uh, this gateway here, absolutely feral gateway, uh, was picked, it's on an angle, you can't get in past the trees, but it's also a really skinny gate. I don't know why Dad chose to put a really small gate here, because when you're coming in with big equipment and trailers, it's, it's very tight squeeze. Feed out this bale, which means my bale, this one here. Now, when you're feeding hay, you want to spread it out because you've got sheep that are shy and don't like eating around others, so you've got to kind of cater to everyone. And then you've got the ones that are feral and will jump on everything. So, kind of got to cater to everyone so everyone gets a meal. That's why we do a very long stretch. And some there, we'll take a break for a minute, pop it out. There we go got the core there we go all right and that's how you feed out a bale I'll be back with beans later the gate I was talking about see this gateway it's on a horrible fucking angle there's a tree root on one side so you either go for a really wild ride or you take out the fence post put that down or we're gonna hit the tree right. and over the stump 
In one of my videos, I say about how we make the dags mulch. That's the dag pile there. So basically all the wool that is like totally worthless, like stuff like dags, we put them in a pile and let it just rot in the paddock. Wool is carbon, pretty much, among, among a couple other things, but mostly wool is carbon. Quite actually a good renewable resource because... Hi, I did a really, really shit job of explaining this. Basically what I'm trying to say is wool's part of the natural carbon cycle and due to the chemical composition of the wool and the nitrogen in the wool, it acts like a fire retardant. That's what I was trying to say in all of this. As I was saying. So we put it all in the pile because it's literally worth nothing. Like proper fleeces aren't worth a lot. Wool with piss and shit stains. Absolutely not. Uh, so yeah, we stick it in a pile, let it break down. You put it on your garden, I suppose. I put my sh pet sheep stags on my garden. It's great for it. It retains moisture. It's the best fucking mulch you could ask for. It retains moisture. It puts carbon directly into the soil. It's a lot of good shit in it, literally. Funny thing won't let me track the tractor. It says it will only track people and vehicles. Bitch, this is a vehicle. It's got fucking wheels. Grabbing my sunscreen out of the RAV, put my anti leather boot juice on, and we'll get these sheep sorted. What I'm doing at the front here is I'm pushing the sheep into the race. Sometimes they hesitate and they don't want to go. And when you have that happen, you get a lot of breaks and then it makes it take longer. You get a better constant flow when someone's there sort of breaking them up as they go in. A lot of the time they'll also go in all at the same time. You'll get two sheep that are stuck in the race. Um, so that's what I'm doing there. Just want to show you the back of the mob. So show you how good typo is doing. As you can also see, the reason why we're drafting in this clip here, we can see we have a merino, we have prime lines, and we also have prime line lambs that are not these used mums, but they've gone on a bit of a wonder. So we need to draft them back off and put them back into their correct mobs. <laughs> Something I'm also finding with the prime lines is they're a lot more pushy against the dogs and Typo's having to get more aggressive with them to be able to handle them. Normally I wouldn't encourage this sort of behavior. However, with these sheep, if you don't, they just walk on you and that can lead to injuries and problems like what we see with Hank. Here. Oh, I just finished that now. We were taking, there was a couple of lambs that have gone through the fence back to the, oh, I don't even think they're their lambs that have just gone through the fence. They needed to be taken off as well as merinos that have come into them from another paddock. So they've had to be sorted out as well. I'll give you a moisten in a minute. Topo, get him. Good girl. I'll chuck my hat on and we will continue feeding bales. Okay, I'm up to the last bales now. Yes. Yes. I'm just putting the tractor away now and then we've got to feed the beans. I'll put the feed cart on. To get the trailer off and this I think needs a grease or something. I cannot get it to go any shorter and the trailer's too heavy for me to lift off. So I'm going to have to get help for this one. Trailer's on. I'm just out on my way to one of the first paddocks because I have enough beans for a couple. Only had enough beans for one paddock, so let's go fill her up. Isn't that right? Slack! 
Why are you so rude to me? I'm trying to fill up the beans and I can't start the fucking motor. Today's going really well for me. So couldn't get it to start. Well, we got the, we, I got the auger running, but because the um, auger's full of beans and it's in the silo, um, normally you need to dry start augers so there's nothing like running into it. When the auger's inside the silo like that, it's constantly getting more and more beans on it as like you pull some out and it's very hard to start an auger when it's got like when it needs a bit of you know run up Take two of the beans okay so the problem is is there's not enough weight to hold this down to make the belt turn so i'm gonna have to hold it up to start it then put it down then hold it down We are full and we're on our way, slugs. Okay, so I'm in the paddock. I'm just heading over to feed the beans out and I'm going to reapply my sunscreen again. Farmers are one of the biggest risks of skin cancer. People think this is a fly mask. Yes, it does work as a fly mask, but that's not its primary purpose. Its primary purpose is sun protection. And by the time I've done that, we are where we need to feed. So let's open the feed cart. This fucking trailer, I've had it fucking up to here with the fucking thing. It's not bloody work. What's your problem? All the wires are connected. Bitch. As you can see, everything's firmly on. That's not the problem. Not this. We continue down the fucking line. Here we go. <sighs> Alright, now I can see the fucking wire colours. Alright, blow. Blow. Tape everywhere. Lights are on. There we go, it's working. We're off again. As usual, we're feeding on the line of hay, so they eat hay as well as beans and we're wasting less beans on the dirt. We just found out tomorrow we're preg scanning the old um, prime line ewes. I did show a little bit of that last time, like a couple of seconds, but because I wasn't there, I didn't get much footage of it. I'm hoping I might be there tomorrow. Emptying the last of the filled bins out and he's getting the gate for me. How nice of him. To show you how ridiculous this shit is. Look at this. This is off the stubble. We have another bloody wheat crop here. Here are all the sheep. Yeah, I might need to give it a bit of a top up. That's just water to just top it back up. That's the last of them there. And done. Now we just need to put the yards away. These yards are older than me and probably dinosaurs, but they're really good. What you do is you put them all in a bit of a zigzag and you come along and the ute's meant to be able to just pick them up when it drives along. Good girl, slug. You did well. Just heading back now. I'm going to go fill up my drink bottle, grab an icy pole. And then we've got to bring the sheep in to be pregnancy scanned tomorrow. Are you in the weeds? Hello, Shla. Was that a good moisten? Okay. Just heading up now to grab the last mob of sheep for the day. They'll be staying down here until tomorrow morning when they get scanned. Basically, it's an ultrasound for sheep. That's exactly what it is. It's an ultrasound for sheep. Cows have gone walkabouts out to here now. Um, they, they were in the other paddock this time the other day, but they're just creeping further and further out. All right, she's off. Really funny story. 
Okay, so the neighbour came to pick up his sheep the other day. So the rams have come back and they're back in with the fucking sheep again. <laughs> oh my fucking God. It's actually three fucking Merino rams in here and I can see them. They're back and they've brought a friend. Come on, focus. There you go. One, two, three. Literally, they were only brought back to that paddock this week and they've already come back through the fence. Can you be quiet and stop whinging? I'm having a whinge. Typo, I'm having a whinge. Let me whinge. Anyway, walk these lamb ewes over and I'll chuck the drone in the sky and see what the vibe is. So we had a bit of an incident. The uh, drone went into the car. However, it's fixed. Don't worry about it. I thought the camera smashed because it was just black and it was half, it was like stuffed. But it's all good. It's all good. Don't worry about it. Not a good threat. I need to think. I need. I need better threats. That was. That was a really poor threat. We're trying to beat 